What's up, everybody? First Pixel Play side quest for 2024. My name is Adam, aka CS Radical. Joined by me, as always, Jen and Chris, and the different, uh, you know, frozen picture of Kalen here. But hey, at least we made it topical. We almost went with the same one because we did record it right after the main show. But uh, in this case, we're like, no, we have to do something different. Don't and tell them how the sausage couple is made. Ideas. It's a trade secret. <laughs> nah, nah, it's, no, you know, you gotta, you gotta be more like Deadpool and just break open the fourth wall as much as you can. That's, that's where, that's where the good laughs come from. But obviously, as you can kind of tell by the screenshot that Kalen has left us with, not to mention the giant hulking portal in, on the screen here to our right, um, we obviously had a lot of reviews that we did talk about on the main show because we'd obviously been off for two weeks. There was a lot of games to go through. But Kalen, you also uh, made the potentially unfortunate or fortunate decision. We will guess we'll find out one way or another. Um, you got the PlayStation Portal, so we figured we'd set aside this week's side quest to talk more about that since... You know, having a review for a peripheral kind of sounds like a nice little thing to go for, especially because a lot of people going in weren't really too psyched about this. So the floor is yours, sir. Was it worth the purchase? Was it was it hyped up enough or was it hyped too little? Yeah. So, I mean, we had episodes and we talked about the portal when it first got announced. We kind of none of us were huge. Like, oh, man, this makes sense. Uh, I think of the three of us, I was the like the, the consumer that was most targeted towards the portal. I, I mean, I have a small kid, so I don't often get to sneak down into my man cave and play video games. I'm sometimes often stuck upstairs with my family. I mean, that sounds terrible, but like I'm upstairs with my family. I don't always have access to my PlayStation or the TV. And so I was apprehensive. But when the reviews for the portal started coming out and they came out quite positive, I was kind of sold on this. And so I got it for Christmas and there's, I want to say it's a success. I, I really like the portal, but there are some caveats and there are some things that are weird choices that Sony made. So to start off, it feels incredible. It is a little heavy in the hands, but I it feels like I am holding a controller. The screen looks amazing. Um, I was playing it and my wife was looking and she's like, wow, this looks so good. It almost looks like I'm playing the PS5. Obviously, it's at 10 1080p it's not at the 4k but with the size of the resolution and i believe it's an oled screen like it looks incredible from a portable perspective absolutely amazing um it feels like you're playing playstation it's great i have no problems with it super easy to set up i was playing it remotely from about 300 kilometers away from my house and it was running pretty well um it like super easy to install i like it it's Pretty easy and intuitive to use. So overall, I really like it. I like it what it does. However, there are some caveats for this review. Uh, I am running it from my house. I have I, I did it initially without my system wired uh, and then I have since wired it up. So I am running at about 800 megabytes per second on my Internet for download and about 10 to 15 megabytes upload per second uh, to give you context of what my speed is. Um, and I was playing it, and from a gameplay perspective, it was running smoothly. Controls felt great. Uh, audio was fine. Visuals were fine. However, I was finding I was getting a lot of stuttering, and I was getting a lot of lagging in terms of screen. The audio would be fine. It would be going smoothly. Like, the game knew that it was still going on. It was just the visuals were not keeping up. Um, there's a whole bunch of things that have been talked about online about how to fix this that, you know, reset your router, make sure your internet's connected, make sure you're close to the router be on um, Wi-Fi 5 instead of like the 2.4 gigahertz one. Um, I did all that and I have a small house like you guys have been here. You guys know it's a small, you know, 1400 square foot townhouse. It's not huge um, and it was struggling to connect. And so I figured out that one of the issues is that if your PlayStation runs natively at 4K, which mine is set up to do that off of my TV, the problem is that the PlayStation portal is not hooked up or not enabled for 4K. And so I found that if I drop the resolution down to 1080p and if I get rid of HDR, totally the system works fine. No problems. HDR seems to be hit or miss as to whether or not it impacts the screen. But I'm noticing that the resolution of itself does impact the, the lagging of the screen. Once I got rid of that, works totally fine. So that's the issue, because if I play it as a controller, it totally works seamlessly with my with my system. So it's communicating well. It's the image that's being downloaded that's not or being uploaded or, or what that's being streamed. That's the problem. The problem is with this is that you cannot change the resolution of your PlayStation from the portal when you are streaming or, or oh. streaming the console. You can't change the resolution that has to be done through the console with a console controller. 
So what that means is I am now in a state where I have to perpetually leave my console at 1080p so I can start it up remotely with my PlayStation portal whenever I want. And now when I want to play games, I have to go and I have to play like I have to then go in and change it up to 4K. What I'm going to try and do, and this might be a situation, is if I just change it so that whatever device is streaming it kind of di dictates that. Right now, my TV automatically turns on when the PlayStation's on. Maybe if I change that, it rectifies that problem. But as of now, I have to keep my PlayStation set at 1080p and change it back up to 4K whenever I want to play it 4K off of my TV. Is it a deal breaker? No. Is this something that Sony could fix with a patch? Absolutely. So I'm, I'm enjoying it. I'm liking it. I think it's a weird choice for Sony to make it that you cannot like you can't change the resolution and that the resolution impacts the stream of the portal. The other big issue I have is that I am not aware that you can use any Bluetooth headsets with the exception of the PlayStation pulse headsets, um, which is once again, also a very dumb idea. There is a place to have a wired connection for headphones, which is great. It's fine. It's acceptable, but just seems like a weird and stupid choice. I yeah, wouldn't play this Bluetooth for any set, sort you're of kind of stuck going with one option and one option only. Exactly. And it's not an inexpensive option. So um, I don't see myself buying another Bluetooth headset solely for this console. I'm just going to go wired. So overall, I wouldn't say this thing is for everyone. If you are interested, if you have a use for it, it certainly works. It works well, but there are some weird and poor decisions that I can see Sony trying to work around and fix. Hopefully they fix it through firmware and it's not a release that like a second edition that comes out. But it works. It functions. The promise is there that if you want to do portable gaming, you absolutely can. I did it remotely from my parents' house, like I said, a couple hundred kilometers away without a wired connection. And I was having those lagging issues, but that might have been a resolution issue as opposed to um, as opposed to a wireless aspect. So, yeah, I'd say it, it delivers on what it promises with some caveats, with some weird decisions by Sony. So if you're on the fence, totally worth it if it, if it suits you. But this is not going to be something that is a slam dunk for everyone. Um, it's a recommendation with an asterisk attached to it. So would it be safe to say then, then if this say gets fixed down the road and they add support so that you can change the resolution so it can better serve anyone's interest depending on their situation. And then if they also get around the whole, like you can use different Bluetooth headsets, is there anything else potentially that would you think would be like a, like a negative about this right now? Or is those just really the two that stand out to you? Honestly, like the only issue, like I don't even think the Bluetooth issue is a huge issue for me. Like that's something I could overlook because there is the aspect of having a wired headphone. So like it's not a deal breaker. You can get a $10, $20 pair of headphones. I bought a case for my system, so it's easier for me to keep a pair of wired headphones in there. So whenever I'm playing, cool, good to go. I don't know if I want to have multiple connections of Bluetooth. So like the headphones are not a deal breaker. For me, it's the deal breaker of having to not be able to switch my resolution based on what I'm playing and having to do that manually from the console. And if I forget to change my resolution on my PlayStation, when I play it now, my PlayStation portal isn't working as it optimally could. And if I'm, let's say not home when I do it, let's say I go away for a weekend and I forgot to do it. That portal now isn't really working. And so that to me is the biggest issue. And it's not an insignificant one. It's not one I'm going to dismiss or say like, it's not a big deal. It is a huge deal but it's not one that I think cripples it. It's just something that it's a weird quirk you have to work around. And the one that I think that Sony could fix. And once it is, this would be a full recommendation for anyone who's interested in the, in the, the portal. And then going forward, is there anything that you think as of your time so far that you would maybe look to be added in the future? Like not like, unless it like I'm, I'm imagining if it's something based on the actual peripheral itself, it's hard to do, but like, is there anything that either with a firmware update or um, like just a brand new, version of the portal in the future that you think could be you know a big help in the future no like i i think it's a great system like it just run it runs like a playstation 5 in your hands you've got the same menu screen you, you go to the home screen everything like i was trophy hunting and i was going in through the tips finding it all there it's all really easy i haven't tested it yet it'd be cool if you could hook it up to multiple consoles like i was kind of dabbling with that idea like if you could have it to you know one or the other i don't know why you would need it but it's a solid system. It works around. I, I don't know if I, I like you can adjust the rumble and, and everything to the sensitivity because it does have all the rumbles and like the haptic feedbacks um, that the regular, regular dual sense has as well. But I don't know how much that consumes battery or anything like that. But like I said, I'm overall happy with it with that one little caveat that I've not heard a lot of reviewers talking about. And it's one that I wanted to vocalize here on our channel.
So really, it's it's safe to say that at this point, like what they've actually built is for what it's supposed to be actually a pretty decent setup minus like, you know, a, a thing that could be easily patched at some point. And that's the thing. There, there's nothing with the physical console itself that is like, no, they can't fix it without a, a re-release or a redesign. From a design perspective, it's absolutely perfect. I, I can't see any reason why you would need to change it. A slight, a slight choice is like if you could swivel the screen to tilt it, is so that way, like you don't have to hold it straight in front of it. Like you're, you can kind of do it that way. But that's a nitpicking thing. From a, from a physical perspective, it is solid. It's ready to go. It's just some slight little weird decisions in there that I think Sony could easily fix. So at this point, it's being obviously it's being offered right now at two sixty nine ninety nine Canadian. Do you think that's a fair price for it, or do you think that this would be more of a sensible price if it was a little bit cheaper? Like, let's say a one ninety nine ninety nine. I mean, I don't think it's a bad price. Like, if you think about it, it is a it's pretty much a dual sense controller, which I think those are going for like what ninety bucks right now, and then an OLED screen attached to it and stuff. So, like, I don't know. Like, I, I it is on the pricier side. I, like I said, it's not something that's mandatory, but if you are, you know, fighting to have screen time with your your roommates your significant other whatever if you're not able to get by your playstation to play like this is something nice like i can have my son sit there and watch you know his shows and i can play portal right beside me or i've had it sometimes where he wants to he started playing astrobot and he'll like to sit there with the portal and just play and so i don't have to i can do what i'm doing and just have him sit beside me and play in the portal while while i do stuff so like if there's if you have a need for if you've been there where you're like oh man i'd like to play playstation but I can't for whatever reason because I don't have access to my TV or, or I want to, you know, play my PlayStation while also spending time with my, you know, significant other while they're watching a show. That's something you can do. Or if you want to watch a show and just binge through like some like we talk about podcast games. Like this is something that if you're watching a show, you can grind trophies and stuff on the portal. I think I think it's it's worth it for the value it is. I th- certainly think like it could be cheaper. I would not hurt to be cheaper, but I don't feel that it's a ripoff for the price that it is. Especially I mean, honestly, when you consider the way that this sounds like stuff. to me then is that it's a no brainer for you. It's a, if it's on sale for Chris and for me, it's a no deal because I just, I have no reason to play handheld. Yeah. Like, yeah. That's unless like, right. yeah, it's, 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 it's a niche thing. This is not for everyone, but for those who need it or those who like see a need for, it or, or a, a use case for it, like it certainly is worthwhile for them. With understanding that you will have to do some tweaking and some, there's some minor inconveniences. Uh, any yeah, uh, any that's questions the, that's you got, the Chris, otherwise? No, I, uh, but I have actually seen one um, also in person. Uh, a friend of ours uh, also got one for, I don't know if it was Christmas or what he got. It was like last year. He plays a lot of Destiny 2 and just wanted to be able to play in bed. So for him, this was a no-brainer. Um, I, I didn't get to play it much, but the one thing I will add that, uh, sorry, not add, but like confirm that Kalen said is the screen is beautiful. Like if there's one thing I noticed right away when I saw it and got my hands on just for a few minutes, but also watched him use it for a while, is that the screen is stunning. Like I was not expecting that. I was expecting a normal screen, not one that that looked so beautiful. So that was not that is definitely like a really good selling point of it is just how nice the actual screen and image is as long as obviously it's coming through clear with all the caveats but yeah, like beautiful beautiful screen well that brings an interesting question then since obviously you just recently got the oled steam deck what would you like how what are the differences between what you saw with the portal and what you saw with the uh, the oled now that you're playing on your steam deck Oh, I would say they're very similar. Like it's, it is, it is that OLED kind of screen look. Um, and I, I can't, I don't know, like I know Kaylin, you've said it's a, an OLED, but I don't know if uh, fully if it was, I didn't actually know that until today when Kaylin said it. Um, but it makes a lot of sense because they both have that just like stunning screen. Um, to be honest, I don't think I would ever pick up a portal only because with a Steam oh. Deck, it's so moddable that I have PlayStation remote play on it running so i'm already using it as like a playstation portal um so for me it'd be just double dipping like there's no reason to do it but the steam deck is also like at least triple the price like it it makes sense that sure it does this but it's so much more expensive if i did not have a steam deck 
this would be something I would pick up on a minor sale. It wouldn't even have to be a big one. I probably wouldn't pay full price. Who it knows? Like I may a have even Black Friday purchase. One. Yeah, like who knows? I may have even found because I I'm a big portable gamer. I do love that more. I played Steam gave its results last year. 80% of my gaming on PC was on my Steam Deck, even though I have a gaming PC. Like I am portable all the way. I just want to sit on the couch and play games again. Yeah, my wife's watching something or I'm listening to a podcast. I'm in bed, whatever. So I totally get everything Kaylin was saying about like that need where it makes sense to just play portably. Um, if I didn't have a way of playing my PS5 portal portable, I would have picked this up. I, I can de like even just from my seeing it with my friend now, Kaylin, hearing it from you. If I didn't have it right now and I didn't have a Steam Deck at the end of this podcast, I would probably go and just order one or, or look if someone had one in my area to go grab because I completely do see the need for something like this. I do get it now, 100%. Speaking of, and there's two things here just to clarify. So um, to your point of like how good the screen looks, I'm looking now, apparently it's an LCD screen. It's not an OLED screen. That's insane. Which, is, which blows my mind because it does look incredible. The other it, thing we didn't yeah. talk about, oh, go ahead. I'm going to... I was just going to say it's it is on par with an OLED screen. Like the fact mm -hmm. that that is LCD does blow my mind because... All other LCD screens I've seen, old Switch, the original Steam Deck, all of that, like they do not compare to this screen. This is like some LCD screen magic then if that is not an OLED, if I'm, if I'm being mm -hmm. completely honest. Yeah. And then the other thing we didn't talk about is the speakers. Like it has a pretty impressive speaker um, setup that it like it doesn't, it's not like, stere it's stereo obviously, but it's not like 3D, but it feels like it, it feels immersive when you're playing audio there. Yeah. And I think like, as you mentioned, like the actual controller, like it is the PS5 controller and it is amazing to hold. Like it is not an uncomfortable, like you're just holding a controller. Like it feels so good mm -hmm. uh, in the hands. I mean, for the minute I held it, right? Like obviously you've got a lot more time with it so you can confirm that a lot more. But like it, if for me, it was extremely comfortable and so nice to actually just have a real controller with the screen in it compared to like a Nintendo Switch, which gets so uncomfortable and unnatural feeling after a certain amount of time. Yeah. So there you go. That's the Pixel Play review of PlayStation Portal. Look at that. We it actually buy for a certain on the show too. People. <laughs> but yeah that is going to do it then for this episode of SciQuest. so thank you so much for checking us out as we start off 2024 with a bang here so obviously you're watching here on youtube like the video subscribe to the channel for more content and you see the link tree link at the bottom you've had like i don't know probably at this point 15 minutes to look at it. if you haven't already clicked on well, i shouldn't say clicked on the link but if you haven't typed this in already what are you doing it's right there do it do it but also every Wednesdays at noon for the main show. And obviously these go up every Friday at 6 p.m. Eastern. So with that being said, we will see you guys on the next episode. Take care and bye-bye for now.